be very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Dennis Gebhardt here with Guru Nation, welcoming you to this episode of Rabbit Trails, along with my partner and friend, Max Masano. Max, how you doing, brother? I'm pretty good. How about you, Dennis? Well, once I get the opening line down, I'll be okay, man. <laughs> Third time was the charm. <laughs> Amen, brother. Amen. Welcome, everybody. We are so glad you've chosen to join us today. And um, if this is your first time with us, let me tell you a little bit about Rabbit Trails and, and why the program, first of all, has that title. Um, here's what we know in our industry, the hairdressing business. Sometimes we get caught up in conversations that take us down a rabbit hole, which obviously has some sort of a rabbit trail leading to it. So... Uh, this show is about some of those subjects, some of those things that happen in our business that uh, are crazy things that we do and uh, subjects that we end up, you know, having controversy with other colleagues over. <laughs> and you just kind of have to laugh about it. So for us today in this program, what we want to do is just kind of explore some of the subjects that still create lots of confusion. And we try to bring light to it as a company, as Guru Nation. We try to give you the facts. We try to give you the science. We try to give you the, you know, the information you can depend upon so you can make informed decisions as a salon professional. And so that's the purpose of this program. Now, we do like to have fun. So, uh, you know, we don't mean to be condescending. We're trying not, not, not trying to make fun of you, anyone. But uh, you got to really sometimes learn to laugh at yourself. Some of the things we say, some of the things we believe, <laughs> and some of the things we actually do in the salon. And uh, that's some of our subject matter we're going to discuss today. But before we do that, um, I, there's a couple of things, Max, I want to kind of talk about kind of the status of the business at this point. You know, we're all sure. coming back from covid and we, we've all dealt with that, not only here in the United States, but worldwide, people have dealt with that. And I was really saddened a couple of days ago because I had the opportunity to see a letter that was sent out from uh, the Sassoon organization. And uh, there's a lot of questions about their future in some areas because they have been really seriously affected as well. And what really saddens me about that is they were the pioneers, one of the pioneers of understanding geometric cutting. I mean, Vidal Sassoon himself, who, by the way, was a barber, <laughs> mm -hmm. was taught people how to understand geometric lines and how they worked together. And that's one of the things that, that the Sassoon organization was known for. They led the way in understanding shape and understanding natural fall pattern and understanding how the hair, how to cut the hair in the based upon the shape of the head. All of these things were part of that basic foundational information that they shared with the world. And then of course, other people who had learned from them, they started to share that information as well. So if you go to a cutting class and someone's teaching you uh, about geometric lines, about vertical, about over direction, elevation, anything of that sort, Understand the root genesis of that. That came from the Vidal Sassoon organization. It may not be the person who's teaching you that has any history with them, but that's where that information come for, came from. I think as an industry, we kind of lose focus of our roots. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. It's like you, you always want to stay abreast of the heritage of, you know, our craft right you know with cutting with color even with you know permanent waving which may not be done a lot these days but still those were all ushered in by people someone created it right and put it out there and it's been evolved upon since then just like with your mentor in hair color yes. sam lappin yes you know People still to this day talk about the Lappin brothers and how they kind of ruled Hollywood and did all they, the star starlets hair color. Absolutely. They did. They were, um, and, and I'm shocked at how many young hairdressers never heard of their name. Yeah. Never, n n they have no idea who they were, 
or what they did. I mean, they they don't realize that Al Lappin, Sam's brother, yeah, created the frosting cap. Jeez. You know, the rubber nipple you put over yeah. the head and you pull yeah. the hair through the holes. He was the creator of that tool. But no one, no one realizes that. And so I, it's just kind of sad. That's why I became a student of the history of our industry, because I think it's important. You know, Same. you've heard me talk to you about uh, when I uh, we filmed that reality show year before last, and I had the opportunity to to be the regular judge that was in this this reality hairdressing competition for all thirteen episodes, and so I would have a guest judge every episode. And uh, one time, I had Alan Edwards was my guest judge. And in case you don't know who Alan Edwards is. He was a gentleman who created Farrah Fawcett's hairstyle <laughs> and he worked on many celebrities, but Farrah Fawcett was his claim to fame. Sure. And we were talking about the genesis of this industry. And, and I said to him one day as we were having a little coffee, I said, you know, I used to think that I got into this business in the, in the middle of it. You know, it was already in its golden years and I was in the middle. I said, I realized that I was there in the beginning. And, and he said to me, he said, yeah, dude, <laughs> we were the pioneers. That's right. <laughs> That's California language. Dude is a one word language. You know, That's you right. can say dude for a greeting. You can go dude for disappointment. You can go dude for questioning. Right. <laughs> it's a one word language. I don't know how I got down that rabbit hole hole. But uh, anyway, I, I think that's that's it's important to kind of you know and respect and think about where you where you came from, where that where you got that. Um, in our business, not a lot of people study the history of the business. Yeah, so, there's a there's a really great book uh, by Michael Gordon, the founder of Bumble and Bumble, called yes. Hair Heroes, and it's not in production anymore, but you can typically find it used on Amazon. And for anyone who wants a really in-depth history lesson of pretty much all the luminaries in hairdressing, it's a great book to own uh, and it's a great read. And to his credit, my mentor, Sam Lappin, is in that book. That's right. <laughs> so uh, it was great. Now I'm getting all teary-eyed when I think about that. But anyway, so here we are today, brother. That's right. And, um, here's some things I want to talk about today. And uh, I, it's been really kind of grating on my nerves because, <laughs> you, you know, I love this business and I love my colleagues. I love my fellow colleagues. But sometimes we get carried away and we believe some of the craziest nonsense. And I, I, I have people send me text messages and they go, can you do this? Does this work? And I mean, sometimes it's like, I can't even respond because I just kind of go, why would somebody tell you that? So, so when someone comes up with that and is asking questions, I want to look to find out, oh, well, who said that? You know, I mean, here's, and I just wrote this in a, a big board that I'll be posting soon. I said that people go to school for many years to become a cosmetic chemist. I mean, it takes a lot of study to become mm -hmm. a cosmetic chemist. And then they work diligently when they work for a company, they work diligently to create a product that works successfully. And I guarantee you, and I don't know all the cosmetic chemists in our industry, but I'll guarantee you that by the time that product finishes development and testing, it works. It works more than it fails. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So then they send that out into our industry where most of the people in hairdressing have had minimal foundational information or training in chemistry. 
minimal. I mean, if you open up Milady, the Milady textbook today, that information there is very minimal information. Yeah. Okay? So you've not studied for years to become a chemist. And then we take that product that works and we tinker with it. <laughs> we do all kinds of stuff to it. And, and that's how we come up with all of these different things that we add to our product. You know, we mess with the formula. I mean, you know, the most popular one I think today is sweet and low. You know, yeah. add sweet and low to your color and it will prevent burning. It doesn't prevent it. Okay. Cream of tartar, which is in sweet and low, will anesthetize the scalp. So they just won't feel the burn. It doesn't mean the burn's not going to happen. And the reason that, that people use that is they think that it's going to prevent it and they, they can use poor behavior because they have that built, they put that into their product. Right. And, and, and there's a myriad of those kinds of things, you know, I, I, or, or the, the squirt of uh, high lift color in with your lightener. Yes. Because it's going gonna, it's gonna to tone it. Yeah. I mean, you have to understand high lift colors only have about three units of pigment in them. I mean, that's like a spit, right? It's going to be gone it's gonna by be the time gone. you get it, get it all Look, mixed together. Well, I, I did a video where I took direct dye. And it was very dark, direct dye. And I put that in a bowl of bleach and it was gone like in five minutes. Yeah. So that's a direct dye. The colors, the dyes that are in high lift tints are oxidative dyes. Right. So those are going to even be, you know, they're, they're not going to even exist the moment you turn around. But those are things that we do to, and it's not new. You know, right. years ago, people were putting color in bleach, thinking they were getting a bleach and tone and believing it, not only thinking it, but they believed it, man. Right. But what, what is so interesting about this whole thing is that if you if you really do know the, the science on how some of the stuff works and, you know, like you don't have to have a degree, but there are things that you can do in a pinch, like adding some direct dyes to your color to right. enhance something, you know, that right. works. Yes. And, you know, those, those are like, those two principles don't annihilate each other. Well, Whereas, right, because like, it's, a, it's, the it's the situation that right. you're using, you know? Right. Yeah, can I add a direct dye to a permanent hair color uh, the last portion of the process and can I get an effect? You can. Okay. Could I add a direct dye to my bleach? Well, I don't recommend it. I don't think the direct guys do anything for you. Why? Because the situation is different. Right. And I think that's, we look for blanket statements in this business. We look for what will make yes. it safe for me to use poor behavior and I still get away with it. Right. You know? Well, I think too, it's like when I get, I get asked similar questions in classes all the time. Can I do blank? And I, my answer is, listen, you can do whatever you want, but know why you're doing it. And, right. you know, if it works for you, great. You know, I, I'm not here to tell you, you know, what you can and can't do. You know, I'm, I'm here to help make you more enlightened on the subject so you can make intelligent choices. Right. Right. You know, so. Well, here's something that I saw on social media the other day, and it affected me because I was one of the people who worked on the creation of this product called Shade DQ. Someone said, you can make Shade DQ. If you take permanent color, use one part color, two parts of five volume developer. So you double your developer and then you use conditioner. You can make shade DQ. I'm going to tell you right now, that is not making shade DQ. 
-hmm. That is not the way that product was made. Now, what do you make when you do that? Some distortion of permanent hair color. Can it create an effect? Possibly. Uh, I would imagine it might. But could it give you the success that they had when they tested it? No. I'm going to tell you that right now. But if you accept that, then you're accepting less than what that product does. And, and we do that in this business. I mean, I can't tell you how many people when I was teaching in New York <laughs> would come to New York and they were required to process Shady Q on dry hair for 20 minutes. And they didn't do that in the salon. In salon, they put it on the hair for five minutes at the shampoo right. bowl. And then when it was processed in New York, they went, oh my God, it's a different color. Right. Well, no, it's not a different color. This is the color. <laughs> when the color you're making supposed something, to be. this is what you, you, what you're making is something that you've chosen to accept. Right. You know, so, so those kinds of things, you know, we do that because one poor planning, you know, if you're out of a product, you know, you have to buy differently. And in our industry today, we don't do that. No one even talks to, to hairdressers about how to have proper inventory for your supplies. That's why you have beauty stores on every street corner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you right now, I know hairdressers who look at their book in the mo in morning and look to see how many colors they have. And they go to the beauty supply store and buy those colors for that day. So, so what happens if somebody walks in and you, <laughs> you've used all your inventory for the day? Right. You know? Another well, hopefully one is... They, they, they are probably using the same six colors all the time. Probably on a daily basis. So <laughs> they, they might have a little overflow. Right. You know, the same thing happens when you hear people saying, all peroxides are the same. Right. So why spend more money buying a manufacturer's peroxide when you can buy the peroxide at Sally's and save money? Well, I'm going to tell you that all peroxides are peroxide. That's true. Mm -hmm. But all peroxides are not the same. You know, when I, when I worked on and created Redken Color Gels, the thickening agent for that hair color product was not in the hair color, it was in the peroxide, the aggregates. So if you mixed that hair color with any other peroxide, <laughs> it would run down the side of the face. <laughs> and people go, why is it not working? Because you mixed it with the wrong developer. Right. And here's what we know about developer. The volume today, when we say 10 volume, 20 volume, 30 volume, volume is not, not a finite line, it's a range. So you can have three bottles that say 10 volume and one could be nine volume, one could be 10 volume, one could be 11 volume, mm -hmm. if you could even measure it with a hydrometer. And that's the reason that they are a lot of range today is because they're cream developers. They have humectants, they have moisturizers, they have all kinds of ingredients in the developer side. That's where most of the time a protein, if they're using that as a point of difference, it's stored in the developer. It's not stored in the color. Yeah. A lot of the conditioning agents are now put in the developer and not in the <clears throat> tube. Exactly. Things like, like squalene yes. and um, arginine, you mm -hmm. know, different amino acids. And I know that right now too, there's been a, a kind of a surge of developers that actually have essential fatty acids added to them mm -hmm. to help keep the hair moist, especially when you're lightening with lightener. So. Oh, and that's the other one. <laughs> All right. So look, let's, let's just go there, Dennis. You can put, if your if your lightener dries out, I want you to understand if your lightener dries out too soon for you, it's not an issue with the lightener. It's an issue with your mechanics. Because remember, drying out of a lightener is the visual of maximizing the, the whole chemical process. 
So if my lightener dries out too, too quickly for me, one, I have to ask myself, did I mix it appropriately? Did I use manufacturer's instructions? Oh, by the way, those are the things, that's that little piece of paper that lays on top of it when you open it up in the box that you throw away. And the you one that goes read. in the trash. <laughs> so do I, do I mix it appropriately or do I mix it different? If I mix a thicker, if I thick, thicker consistency, that's going to dry out much quicker for me. But it's not a big deal. You just say, well, if I like it thicker and it dries out quicker, I have to mix it as I go. Yeah. And if I mix it as I go, it's never going to dry out on me before I finish my application. Yeah. So <clears throat> could you add stuff to it? Yeah, I suppose. You know, could you add canola oil to it to keep it moist? So I suppose. Could you add olive oil? I suppose. Uh, but why would you do that? Why would you do that? Those chemicals are designed to work in a specific way. You know, I mean, we are screwing around with bleach like I've never seen before. I mean, like yeah. what this is the newest one I saw? Diet Coke in my bleach. Because Diet why? Coke is an acid. It is 2.76 on the pH scale. Slightly higher than lemon juice. Okay? And if I add that into my bleach, the, the claim is that it lowers the pH of the bleach. Now, I, I'm going to test that. I'm going to put out a video. I've not done that yet. So I'm speaking out of school. But why would you do that? What's the point? The purpose, the reason a bleach has a higher pH is because of what's required of that product to achieve success. I mean, that's the way we build those products. Right. So, I mean, look, if you're going to do that, go all the way, you know, like if you need protein in the hair, wrap a pork, a pork chop in your hair, you know, or use bone marrow on your hair, make a bone marrow POTUS, put a bag on your head and sit under a dryer for 15 minutes. You'll smell like, <laughs> you know, you Hot won't roast. smell very good, but, you know, these kinds of things we've done for centuries, for years in this industry, because we don't know any better. I mean, look, when I was learning to, to color hair, I mean, there was a belief system that if you took Nescafe, which is an, an instant coffee, and you put that in your bleach, it would allow you to lighten the hair and create a tan blonde. You know, I mean, all kinds of those systems. I th we have to stop tinkering around and doing voodoo hair color. Yeah. Here's why I say that. Number one, because you can't guarantee the result. So it's great that it's trickery. You know, trickery is really good. If you're an educator and you're using that kind of stuff in your class, you know, you have to be very careful because that's the word you're spreading and someone's going to take you literally and you really will be responsible for what that person's success is based upon what you share. And that's why when I hear somebody talking about this kind of stuff, I look to who educated you, who taught you that, you know, secondly is legal ramifications. Here's what you have to know. If you take a manufacturer's product and you alter the formula, meaning that you add something to it that was not recommended, that's not on any instruction, and your client suffers for whatever reason, maybe skin irritation or, or something, burning, they, you burn their scalp. Um, <clears throat> Max and I were just talking about that, about taking bleach and putting it under a dryer. Why do you think manufacturers today as a whole do not recommend heat with their bleach? Why do you think that is? Here's what it is. We know that if you put bleach under a dryer for a prolonged period of time, what happens is it breaks down. The peroxide is accelerated and it breaks into water. You, so you decrease the amount of oxygen, it becomes water, and now the bleach starts to run down the side of the client's face. That's why nobody really recommends heat. 
Right. I mean, and all these things can seem really innocuous, <clears throat> you know, put a dab of this, a drop of that. But, but, you know, like really the moral of the story is, is if the manufacturer wanted you to do it, they would tell you in the instruction, right. Right. these products have been tested and not just on like two people, they're tested on thousands of heads. Right for their performance and their effectiveness, you know? So again, you guys can do whatever you want, mm -hmm. but you know, this is the truth. Right. And, and the thing is, is like, you know, it sounds like we're standing up for all the manufacturers. We are, you know, we never have been against manufacturers. We've just been in favor of truth <laughs> versus right. stories. That's all. Yeah. And, and, I have to give them credit. They work very hard to develop products. I, I mean, I, I've told this story so many times over so many years. You know, we work on a product. We test it. Not on 12 people, not on 100 people, not on 1,000 people. On thousands of people, we test this product. And then after it's tested in the laboratory, it goes out to field testing mm -hmm. where we send it out to people in the field and they test it. Then once it has been approved, it's sent out. So imagine a hair color and there's no color chemist that's going to ever sit down and say, let's make a hair color that doesn't cover gray hair. <laughs> Do you think that's like, <laughs> yeah, let's go. Let's make sure we don't win this game guys. Yeah, exactly. Right. They're going to, they're, you're going to love this shade. It doesn't work at all. That's right. <laughs> So now it works. We've tested it. It works. We ship it out. We put it in production. We ship it out. And somebody says, it doesn't cover gray. Seriously, it doesn't cover gray. And the, the one that's even worse is it doesn't work for me. Like, all right, we're going to make this product, except this guy over here, we're going to make it so it doesn't work for him. Right. You seriously think Cause it, that? Because it knows. It's, it knows. It's... Yeah. Well, speaking of it knows, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But so please think about what you're doing. I, I mean, you can do whatever you want, like Max says. But, but just think about that. Because, you know, we do crazy stuff in this business. And, and we're, it, it's funny. But then again, it's like, we're not getting the grounding information to help us understand why those things are happening. And that's why manufacturers today are, you know, they're jumping on board with it. Now they're adding in special things in their product uh, and they're putting those additives in already as they sell you the product because they don't yeah. want you adding something that may change the way the product performs. And, and that's what's happening in our business. As yeah. far as that goes. They're trying to, you know, you guys always have to remember that, you know, the goal of hair color manufacturers is to sell more hair color, Right. period. They're going to jump on whatever's trending, you know, and whatever's hot. Right. And they're going to figure out a way to story tell around that trend. And exactly. that's, that's great. That's good marketing. I mean... You know, we're not saying any of this because we want to like be d bags or, you know, sound condescending. We're we're telling you guys this because we care about you. Um, you know, we want you to make make good choices, guys. Absolutely, absolutely, good choices and successful choices. Yeah, you know, you know? that that's what is most important to do. That so, question when you're taught some things when you're told some things, question that. I mean, I had a message come through today. Um, there's evidently a manufacturer out there that is people who say they're sensitive to ammonia, which I laugh at that. <laughs> ammonia is a byproduct of a human metabolism. You, you make ammonia in your body. Right. Okay. So, so people are, they say they're allergic to ammonia. So now a manufacturer is saying, that they encapsulate their ammonia. So my first question is, what are you encapsulating ammonia in? <laughs> so I just, I just wanted to double check that I, my definition was correct. So 
Oh, did you look at it? Oh, you're a good guy. <laughs> encapsulate means to enclose something in or as if in a capsule. <laughs> so technically, the ammonia is encapsulated in the tube. Yes. <laughs> it's holding it in there. Yeah. And then when you poke the tube with the cap, what do you smell? Ammonia. ammonia. Yeah. It's yeah. no longer encapsulated. It's kind of crazy. You know, it comes down to the, the causation versus correlation story, Max. Because mm -hmm. so in, in research, when they, 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 they take a subject and they, or, or a product or an ingredient, and they ask themselves, you know, especially if there's bad information or bad news, it gets bad rap. They say, is it a causation issue or is it a correlation issue? So here's the difference. Cor correlation means you can tie something to something else. In other words, right. indirectly, it's part of the whole picture. Causation means directly it affects that situation. Right. So direct connection versus indirect, right? Exactly. Yeah. So think about some of the things that you hear, um, some of the ingredients that manufacturers use. They use a special ingredient and they tell you all the benefits of that ingredient. But is it a direct benefit from that ingredient or is it a indirect benefit from that ingredient, which doesn't actively work on the hair, it may work just on the skin or mm -hmm. on, on the body. You know, the most common one I can think of right now, the one that's really trending is collagen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so collagen can help you produce healthier hair, but not directly being applied to the hair. Collagen is most effective on living tissue, <laughs> on the scalp and the, you know, the base of the hair follicle and all of that. Mm -hmm. So indirectly collagen can produce a healthier hair, but it's not directly affected. It does not directly affect the hair itself. And, and many manufacturers are using that as a big selling point today. That's why when I see people advertise that we have collagen, well, great, let me look at the structure of the hair carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, and sulfur, cysteine, all the amino acids. Collagen's not in that list, is it, Max? No. No. So, you know, think about that when you're looking at those things. So, speaking of information, um, as we did our last episode, we had a segment called Say What? And um, this is the second uh, installment on that Say What uh, edition. So we are now going to go to Say What. Hold on. See you back here in a minute. All right, everybody, welcome to another segment of Say What? <laughs> Did I say that right? Say What? Yeah. Say What? All right, in this, uh, in this uh, segment, what we try to do is we try to bring you information that has been published in social media and uh, kind of give you our spin on the information, things that we really want you to think about when you hear this. Now, the piece we're going to show you today, of course, we've crossed out the face and we've changed up the voice but um this this segment has been viewed by i think 300 and some odd thousand people have viewed this segment so i want you to know this is not just some obscure thing that didn't get very many views it got thousands hundreds of thousands of views and i want you to be aware that this information is out there and this is what people are using to help educate themselves. Because truly today, 
um, many hairdressers believe, well, I'm just going to go to YouTube and I'll learn it off YouTube. I don't have to go to a class because it's all on YouTube. In fact, you've heard people say that. You've seen them oh, yeah. type that in on Instagram. Mm -hmm. You know, why would I go to a class when I have YouTube? So uh, here we go. And we're going to stop it periodically and just have a chuckle or two. And uh, <laughs> it should be quite fun. All right. So, Max, let's see if we're ready. I'm going to go to share screen. And here we go. Question. So definitely hope. Well, oh. rewind. Rewind. Okay, let's there try we go. Again. Hey guys, in today's video I'm going to talk about something that is so simple yet I don't think I've ever touched and I keep seeing people pretty confused about this. So that's explaining the difference between a bleach or lightener, a color application versus a high lift, and lastly a toner. So I'll start off with the simplest to understand which is bleach, uh, which hairdressers like to refer to as lightener. And that's exactly what it does, it lightens hair. So basically what it does is it strips the hair of its natural pigment. Basically all of our hair's base is white. And so brunettes just... Okay, stop. <laughs> so Matt. Oh, insert the screeching tire sound <laughs> right now. Strips the hair and basically all of our hair is white. The base is basically white. Right. Right? Yeah, that's what... That's what this person is saying. And that is absolutely not true. But think about this. They're telling you that bleach strips the hair. So that's not a very pretty thing to think about. And that the hair is basically white. Uh, you're gonna love this next piece too have like an extra layer basically of color. So in order to strip that, you basically have to ruin it, damage it, basically break open the hair to expose that white bit that's inside. So is the hair an egg? Do you have to break open the shell to, to release the white? Ooh. Okay, and uh, oh man, a typo, Dennis, brunettes, sorry. Uh, and says brunettes have an extra layer of color. Now, I want you to understand this is a person who has a nice following of, of people. And this is what this person is sharing. All right, let's go on. Woo. So lightener or bleach is the extraction of color. There's nothing added in. It's really just stripping of the hair. So when people say like, oh, you know, I don't want my blonde to fade. It's, there's, there's nothing to fade. You just remove something. Nothing was added that slowly could come off if that makes any sense. And with lightener, you can have sometimes up to seven levels of lift. So this is the most powerful, the strongest thing you can use. It can lift your hair in drastic kind of amounts of levels. So for the next one, it is color and high lifts. So what color does is there's a little bit of developer added in to strip the hair just a teeny bit, basically just open up the hair so that it can receive the- A little bit of developer, just a, a teeny bit. Squirt. Isn't that interesting? You know, it's <laughs> a teeny bit of I developer. Mean, I mean, we're not even that. we're not even halfway through this yet. No, so many cool. things. Um, so basically, it is like two parts, like a little bit of opener, which is kind of like a lightener, but a lot less strength. And then there is the color part, so the part that is getting put. Okay, I've never heard of opener. I didn't know opener was in my color. Did you? Nope. <laughs> so you know they, it just it just slays me i'm just like everything hair so when you see on the box that it says you know you'll get this beautiful golden brown the color that's in there isn't necessarily golden brown because it knows that you already have some browns in there so it has been did she just say hair color has a brain sounds like it <laughs> uh... Hair color brand, and it, it knows. Oh my God. Include the accents I mean, to make it more golden. Now, hi. What? Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I could think of another name for this segment. Yeah. What? But I can't say it out loud. Oh, okay. <laughs> you get a lot more lift in the original, like, regular color. You mix it with a lot more developer and you mix it with higher developers. So instead of the 20 volume, you can mix with the 30 or a 40. Um, so basically that gives you a lot more lift 
but it's still not as powerful as bleach is. So this is great for if you have brown hair and say you want to add some caramel highlights, this is perfect for that. Um, or if you are a blonde and you have a really stubborn dark root, it's great for that. So just imagine it has a lot more lift and um, a little bit less deposit, but it's still not as powerful as the bleach. And now moving on to, to me, the simplest and the easiest one to use, yet it's probably the most confusing to um, clients and people that, I guess, don't do hair. So a toner, all it does is it has no opening ability, has no, um, no lifting ability. Again, not true. A toner, in most cases, has alkalinity. If it has alkalinity, it has opening ability, whatever that is. Uh, it's got the opener, that, a little bit of opener. Maybe, maybe that's the opener, I don't know. <laughs> so it doesn't strip the hair of anything. All it's doing is coating the hair in this color. And so these are meant to correct color, so they're perfect. So toners, not all toners coat the hair. Toner, remember, toner is not a product. Toner is a process. So like if I'm using a toning shampoo, yeah, that would be coating the hair. But if I'm using an actual toner where I mix it with a developer, a processing solution, or whatever you call that, activating solution, Lotion. it's, not, it's not coating the hair. It's actually developing some dyes in the hair strand. And it's not necessarily only for correction. Blondes that have just been bleached, or even browns that were maybe left too red, or anything like that. Whatever it is that you want to add a tone of. So it's not going to change the level of your hair. So a lot of people also say, like, put a toner, it makes my hair brighter. It does not make your hair brighter whatsoever. It appears that way sometimes in blondes, because yellow and gold, the eye sees it as warm, and warm normally is darker. So if you see a hair that is... All right, so warmer is darker. That's interesting. <laughs> On the same level, say level 10, but one is ashy and one is gold. The ashy one is going to appear brighter because it's blues that are basically screaming at you. And blues are, to the eye, a lot brighter. Okay, blue, which is the strongest primary tone that we think about, actually helps to subdue warmth so it wouldn't look brighter i think uh, there's no. a there's a contradiction in far as terms go um you know <clears throat> blue at lightest at the lightest levels will make the hair look lighter not brighter because blue at the lightest level is not pure blue Right. And it helps create that white effect like in platinum hair. So with this one having the least or no ability to lighten or lift the hair, this is the one that will absolutely fade the fastest because there's nothing really to hold on to. It's basically just sitting on the hair. All right, so I hope this was useful information. It's just sitting on the hair. God, I hope she doesn't shampoo her hair because if it's just sitting on the hair, it's going to come off. Um, if anything, even if you're not doing hair at home, if you are going to be talking to your stylist, it's always good to be informed. It's always good to know what you're talking about. And so I hope that this <laughs> has clarified a lot of questions. I know, again, with something so simple, sometimes it relieves so many other questions. So I definitely hope. Oh, my God. Say what? Say what? Dude. All right. Dude. <laughs> Look, you have to laugh at this. You really do. Um, and then you have to also cry a little bit because this information is out there in the public discourse. And, and understand that, you know, whether you're a hairdresser and you're listening to this information or whether you're a consumer and listening to this information, it's not accurate information. Simple as that. So even on YouTube, even on Instagram, even on Facebook, question what you hear. Don't take it at face value because there's so much out there. Like I've said before, there's a lot of opinions, a lot of perceptions. 
but not a lot of science. Not a lot of science, right, Max? Yeah. Jeez. All Clearly. Right. Clearly, you guys. Clearly. Absolutely. So look, um, hope you enjoyed this edition of Say What? And uh, we'll see you again on another time. So back to the program in progress. See you later. Bye. All right. Welcome back, everybody. How was that? Oh, my God. That was painful. That almost hurt my heart. That hurt my soul. <laughs> uh, uh, so it's a crazy world we're living in. And uh, it's a crazy industry. Um, we are highly emotional people. Uh, we want to believe everything that we're told. Please don't. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, not everything you were told is accurate but yeah. you know it's been fun today max uh, i'm excited because uh you know max and i are doing a program on the 16th of may called delete it and it's totally focused on direct dyes we're going to talk about number one the history of direct dyes in our industry the different types of direct dye categories uh we're going to talk about how to address some of those things uh that some of those dyes that we deal with we're actually going to be doing some of that in uh, little video clips. So you'll be able to see, you know, ways to approach and, and the way that we recommend that we think will really help you in uh, deleting those direct dyes and, and actually leaving the hair with better integrity. Uh, so I'm very excited to do this class with you, yes. Max. We've had great response over it. Um, we've had uh, lots of people wanting to know, you know, is it a live class? Is it a live and a recorded class? And um, we've decided that we knew we were going to record it, but we've also decided that if you pay a tuition and, and you, you, you're unable to attend the live class, um, we will enable you, we will supply you with a link so you can watch the recorded version. What you'll miss out on, of course, is the Q&A and the interaction with us. So um, if you're working that day or something is causing you, if it's a time restraint because you're somewhere in, in the world where your time will be in the middle of the night somewhere. Australia. Please, Australia, for example, Western Australia. Uh, reach out to us and we will make sure that you go ahead and purchase your tuition and then we will supply you with a link to a pri our, our private YouTube channel where you can then log on and watch that. We'll give you a specified amount of time to watch the class. And so you'll be able to see it. So even if you're not able to attend the live class, you will be able to see the recorded version of that class. Um, you'll just pay a regular tuition. You'll miss out on the interaction with the coaches, which is Max and I. So uh, and we're excited about that. 90 minutes. So it's not gonna take up minutes. your whole day. Just, you know, good solid info that you can yeah. use behind the chair right away. Yeah, even if you're ADD, you'll be okay <laughs> with that. Um, we're also excited that uh, we are gonna start uh, actually our live in-person hands-on uh, classes starting in July, July 11th and 12th will be the first class we do, which is session one of our premier hair color program called the Pinnacle for Hair Color. It is a six day program broken into three two-day sessions. So what we do is we bring you in for two days. We do um, a specified type of information. We send you home. You get to apply some of those techniques into your salon and working with your, your daily clients and guests. And then you come back for another session. Then you go, go back home and you do that a couple of different times, you know, session one, session two, session three, in between session one and two, two and three, and even after number three, we have also a coaching session where we log on via Zoom and we do a one hour coaching session with you where if you have any questions and that's between your visits to our academy. So we are in constant contact with you and <clears throat> we found that it's really a great way to grow someone in the hair color 
hair color profession. We cover foundational information. We talk about application information. You have mannequins to work on. We furnish your mannequins. We furnish your tripods for you. You are furnished. Uh, you have breakfast, continental breakfast every morning, and you have lunch every day. So um, pretty exciting. And uh, we pretty good food around the academy so it'll be a good opportunity for you and uh then at the end everyone who graduates from pinnacle uh they get a plaque which is a beautiful glass plaque uh, that you can mount and be very proud of when you go back to your salon so we're excited about that that's not the only live class we're going to be doing starting in july but it's the only one that's on the books right now um i'm sure max and i are going to be doing some live things together and uh, if you are a salon owner or you are a group of salon professionals and you're, you would like to have us, you know, in your salon to do a live class with your staff and group, please reach out to us. We'll be happy to send you some of the details of what it would require in order to get us to come out to do an in salon for you. And we would be happy to do that. Be sure to... Um, Stay with us here on YouTube. I thank everybody for following us on YouTube. We are very proud of the response that we have gotten and that the impact that our show is having. So uh, if you can subscribe here, right down here, just below me, I think it's below me to the left. I'm, you can subscribe to our, our YouTube station. We also invite you to join us on Instagram. You can find Max at Max M Hair. You can find me at Real Captain Color. We also invite you to take a look at our Guru Nation um, page and Facebook. And uh, if you really want to be part of the Guru family, we invite you to join Guru Hair Tribe, which is a private um, forum where we share information. And you're also, you know, you get premier stuff to our podcast called guru in your ear so you have an opportunity to get some things in advance and lots of communication lots of questions and answers answered for you in that group the only thing we ask is that you please fill out all the information that means two questions please answer the two questions simple as that and then we can bring you into the forum so we have lots of things going on. And of course, you can visit our website anytime at www.gurunation.net and uh, go to our educational page. It will show you what we have available for you as far as education goes. Uh, if you only see it up there like three months at a time, that's what we normally do because, you know, things change throughout, throughout the year. <clears throat> we also, for some of our classes, we have premiere videos, preview preview videos where it tells you a little bit about the class and we invite you to go to our gallery so if you want to see what a guru class looks like we've got several classes posted up there kind of gives you an idea about what we do in a class and a hands-on program so tons of stuff come and visit us and uh if this has been beneficial to you please tell your friends um we certainly love doing this we do this because we care about you um our mission is to help you become more successful, is to help you develop more confidence, is to help you discover the genius that's in each and every one of you. Right, Max? That's right. Absolutely. We want to empower you. Yes. And we thank you for all your support and love. You bet. And we're very, very happy that uh, we have been uh, helpful for people. And oh, also Tuesday night, uh, we're doing a live IG on Instagram, and that will be at Real Captain Color. And what we're doing is bringing in some of the people that have attended Guru Nation Education and having them kind of tell you how they've benefited from it. Rather than us telling you about the benefits, uh, right. we thought maybe it would be good to have real people tell you Test what it's done, done, for, done for them. That'll be at 5 o'clock Pacific time, so that will be seven o'clock in the central region and eight o'clock uh, in Eastern. the eastern region. Uh, we'll be going live now that we can have four people on Instagram. Isn't that cool? That's way cool. <laughs> so, 
Max, it's Dennis. been fun, brother. As per usual. Episode 17, man, in the books. <laughs> I mean, I feel like this is like a full season. Yes. We're going to have to have like a, a reunion episode. We will yeah. have to. Yes, you're absolutely right. <laughs> All right, everyone. Listen, we wish you a happy uh, week. Next week, let it be great for you. And we hope you enjoy your coloring and what uh, all the things that you're doing. So until I see you again, from my heart to yours, I'm Captain Color. I'm out of here. Max, how about you? I'm out. All right. Listen, everyone. Have a great day. See you soon. See you guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.